Item number SCP-1877 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Due to the impossibility of transport, each instance of SCP-1877 is contained in situ at the subject's original point. When practicable, the Foundation shall secure ownership of the origin point, soundproof the subject's living quarters, and install inward-facing locks on any interior doorways adjacent to the subject. Foundation medical staff are to review subject's condition on a 48-hour cycle, measuring any visible extracorporeal intestine. Any intestinal retraction of over 10 mm in a single 48-hour period is to be immediately reported to Research Director. Any publicly accessible infrastructure containing any length of extracorporeal intestine is to be rotated out of service if practicable, or serviced only by Foundation-approved personnel if impractical. Endoscopic discovery of any additional extracorporeal intestine is to be reported immediately to the Research Director. Description. SCP-1877 is an anomalous gastrointestinal disorder affecting a number of geographically disparate individuals, designated SCP-1877-01 through SCP-1877-03. In addition to their abnormally long and continuous gastrointestinal tract, subjects exhibit severe neuropsychiatric symptoms including left hemispatial neglect and mild dysphagia. While subjects' immobility renders most medical imaging impractical, preliminary EEG results demonstrate unusually high levels of electrical activity in patients' right parietal lobes. To date, over 30 kilometers of continuous intestine have been endoscopically mapped. Subjects' intestinal tracts have been observed to intersect with numerous man-made artifacts, including pilot lights, electrical conduits, light bulb sockets, telephone receivers, water mains, sewage pipes, and subway tunnels. Thirty-one hours after entering SCP-1877-01's digestive tract, objects which have entered that tract can be observed passing through SCP-1877-02's entry stoma and exiting thirty minutes thereafter. Presumably, they then travel to SCP-1877-03 and are passed to additional individuals or excreted. Mapped portions of the SCP-1877 gastrointestinal network consist of the following. Four centimeters beyond the pyloric valve, SCP-1877-01's duodenum turns outward through a painless stoma in its abdominal wall, extends across subject's living room, and enters a light fixture located in the ceiling of his apartment. Architectural and endoscopic investigation of its gastrointestinal tract seems to indicate that it then descends through the wall of its apartment, enters a water line, diverts into the Washington, D.C. metro system, and then takes a sharp southward turn which renders endoscopy impracticable without severe injury to the patient. The subject's gastrointestinal tract then resumes in Busan, Korea, exiting through a pilot light in SCP-1877-2's oven traversing the kitchen and bathroom, and entering through a painless stoma in the second subject's abdominal wall. After 1.4 meters of superficially normal small intestine, a second length of jejunum exits through a second stoma in the interior abdominal wall, descends into the subject's bathroom sink, and passes 3.7 kilometers through the Busan sewer system. Endoscopic investigation demonstrated that SCP-1877-02's upper digestive tract is no longer continuous with the lower digestive tract now occupying his body. A third individual, designated SCP-1877-03, is presumed to exist but has not been found. Presuming that the southward bearing of SCP-1877-02's small intestine is continuous, the uncontained third subject is hypothesized to live somewhere within 30 kilometers of Adelaide, Australia. At present, subject's condition is unstable. Beginning in 2007, both known subjects' extracorporeal intestines begin to retract into architectural features of their apartments. At recovery, SCP-1877-01 presented with 24 meters of slack extracorporeal intestine permitted him limited mobility within its quarters. At present, SCP-1877-01 only possesses 8 meters of tout extracorporeal intestine, confining him to a single room of his apartment. SCP-1877-02's retraction has been less severe. At recovery, subject presented with 41 meters of slack intestine. Post-recovery retraction has reduced his intestinal slack to 34 meters. Addendum. 
On December 5, 2012, a Foundation recovery team entered an apartment in Adelaide, hypothesized to be the origin point of SCP-1877-03. No anomalous features were detected, however a handwritten letter was found in the apartment's dishwasher. That letter is transcribed below. Dear General Electric, I have long appreciated your products, but now I draw close to the socket and there are questions. For instance, what is the problem? I think the problem is that there is a bad disease. My stomach hurts. And I own a General Electric dishwasher, model PD-968-DPBB, and it does not even help me. Everything growls and boils and whips. There is a stink. I have called my cousin in America and told him that there were difficulties with sickness. He told me to call you because you are where the problems come from, that there is an electrical wave which comes from my dishwasher and goes to my guts. Also, what will happen? The problem is now very bad. I have to stand so close to your socket that I can hear the electrical wave. Like whale song, I will have to go in soon. My guts will make me. I know that General Electric cannot make it stop, but there needs to be an answer to the mystery of the appliances. The answer should come in the manual which goes with the socket, so that there is less anxiety when we all have to go into our appliances and live in the guts of the earth, as all of us someday shall do. Tomorrow I think I will have to go in. When it ends, will I live alone in the names of appliances? How does one traverse the guts of the earth so that there is no problem? Is this a sickness that shoots an electrical wave from all dishwashers or just mine? Please call me tomorrow, General Electric. There will not be much time. I have so much anxiety. Thank you so much for all your products. Though the letter appears to have never been sent, a review of telephone logs indicates that a call was placed to the apartment's telephone from General Electric's headquarters in Fairfield, Connecticut. The precise origin point of that call, the subject matter of the conversation which followed, and the individual responsible are still undetermined as of.